All right, um, this morning I'm going to try and work on that uh, self-review problem uh, 3-8 on page 84. We had a company who measured 600 pipes and they found that the average mean or the average size of their, their pipe was 14 inches with a standard deviation of 10 inches. So I've gone ahead and I've constructed a curve representing the distribution of the sh shapes of the or diameter of the pipe plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean. So when I look at this what I've got is I've got this area right here is plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. All I've done is taken the mean of 14 and added the standard deviation of 0.10 to come plus one standard deviation and then I've gone minus one standard deviation from the mean which gives me 0.90. Now when I go out plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean all I've taken is the mean plus or minus two well each standard deviation is 0 0.10 so 14 plus 0 0.20 is 14.2 now down here, I've gone minus two standard deviations from the mean. Each standard deviation is worth 0 0.10, so 14 minus 0 0.20 gives me this area of the curve right here, plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. Remember that the standard deviation just allows us to move up and down the distribution in equal increments. So when this line here represents plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean. Standard deviation times three is 0 0.30 plus 14 gives me 14.30 as the point that lies three standard deviations above the mean and 0 0.10 times three minus to the left of the mean gives me 14 minus 0.30 gives me 13.70. So now that we've established that, we can go ahead and take a look at what the problem asks, asks us. First thing it says is that if the shape of the distribution is not known, those are your key words. As soon as it says the shape of the distribution is not known, you automatically know that we're going to use Chebyshev's theorem. When we use Chebyshev's theorem, we're going to use this formula right here. 1 minus 1 over k squared is going to give us the percentage of our data that falls plus or minus k standard deviations from the mean. So, they want to know what percentage of the observations will be between 13.85 and 14.15? So, next job is to find out where the heck is that on our curve. Well, 14.15 is going to fall right there, isn't it? halfway between 14.10 and 14.20. 13.85 is going to fall right here, halfway between 13.80 and 13.90. Because I know that each one of these standard deviations, the distance right here, is one standard deviation and is worth 0 0.10, then if I come out and want to go whoops, right into the middle here, and I want to come out here, come right in the middle here, it makes sense that that is one and a half 
standard deviations from the mean. It's the whole first standard deviation and just one half of the next one. So now I know that I have to go one and a half standard deviations from the mean because right here is the value for 13.85 and right here is the value of 14.15. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to apply the I'm going to apply Chevy Chev's theorem where K Remember we said k is equal to the number of standard deviations from the mean that we need to go? So it's 1.5. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take 1 minus 1 divided by 1.5 squared. And if you do that math, what you're going to end up with, a with is a number that's point five 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 a bunch of fives that will round off to point five six. And I think that that's the answer that your textbook author gives you in the um, in the back of the book. Remember that k always represents the number or the quantity of these standard deviations that we're going to move up and down the mean until we get to the point on the curve or the horizontal axis that represents the upper and the lower points in the range that we're trying to find. So now let's look and see what happens when we deal with the second part which is presuming normal distribution. All right, as soon as we can presume normal distribution, we can use the empirical rule. Well, the empirical rule is pretty straightforward, and it's the same for every normally distributed curve. Remember, this area right here represents plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. Well, if you recall from your reading, you know that the empirical rule tells us, and my other little nifty video, said that 68% of our data always falls plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. This line here represents plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. Remember it's this first standard deviation worth 0 0.10 plus a second standard deviation worth 0 0.10 minus one standard deviation minus two standard deviations. And according to the empirical rule, remember 95% of your data falls plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. So that simply gives us the answer that 95% of their pipe lengths presuming normal bell-shaped distribution will fall between 13.8 and 14.20. Remember, it's the difference between presuming normal or bell-shaped distribution and not normal distribution. When the shape of the distribution is unknown, then we apply Chevy Chev, 1 minus 1 over k squared. When normal distribution or mound-shaped distribution is assumed, then we apply the empirical rule and simply go 68 95 and 99.7%. Hope this helps and see you guys soon.